right, so I have a nice warm drink now. It is now 40 degrees outside, so it's still pretty chilly. I'll go ahead and get into what this video is actually about. So I've been doing the scamp full-time to now part-time nomad lifestyle since March of 2022. And I've learned a lot about what I use, what I don't use, what I refuse to leave Kentucky without. And I thought it would be a good idea to do a video kind of explaining the top 23 things that I feel are necessary for this lifestyle. I tried to narrow it down as much as I could. 23 sounds like a lot. It's really not. So I'm going to split the video into two different categories. It'll be the, you know, scamp, off-grid life, things I feel are necessary for that. And then the other category is more like personal items, things that I could live without. I just really don't want to. So each of these products I use every single day or they are a key component for me living out here. So if you are thinking about living this lifestyle or you already are, you can take some of the things that I've learned, some of the products that I use to make your life easier. So I do want to say that this video is not sponsored. All the products that I'm talking about, I generally do love. I've either been using them for the past year and a half or I've replaced other items with these items and I feel like these products actually work better. So all the things that I'm going to talk about will be in the description below in order of how I'm talking about it. Many of them are attached to Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on it and you buy the product, I do get a small commission. And then some of the products aren't on Amazon. And if they're not, I'll still add the link to the website or to wherever I got it from so you can still easily access it. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the first product. All right. First things first, Starlink. I have to have Starlink out here. So I work for an online technology publication and so I need good internet to be able to upload articles, uh, do some research, you know, pitch articles, do the thing. I also need internet to make sure I can stay back in touch at home so people know I'm safe. And so a space like this is honestly perfect for Starlink because it's super open. There are only two drawbacks that comes with Starlink is that I can't go to any of like the cool campsites that are in like really in the woods that have tree coverage. I have to have open space for the satellites, obviously. So, I mean, I do get to miss out on that sometimes. That sucks, but it's okay. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, I still get cool campsites like this. The other downside, it is $150 a month. It's not cheap at all. And the startup fee for the equipment is $599. Uh, this is the Rome version. I don't know exactly what it is that's different between the standard version that would be for like a home, like the resident version and the Rome version, but I can say that with the Rome version, I've had no problems. So, Starlink, absolutely. The next one. Hey, bud. Obviously, if I'm running Starlink, I need power. Solar panels. Can't do this without them. I'm not gonna go into the whole entire solar setup. I do already have a video on that, but as far as products go, all of the solar panels are Renergy. That one is a, let's see, okay. That one's 200, that one's 100, and then there's one on top of the scamp roof that is also 100. So I get 400 watts of solar that comes in. They work amazing. I have no beef with them at all. Been using them since March 2022 and it's been, it's been great. So if you wanna know more about the solar panels, check out that video or Percy could tell you all about it. Percy, can you tell me about the solar panels? No? Okay. I'm gonna go inside and talk to you about the batteries that the solar panels power. All right, so you can't really see them from here, but the batteries are all the way in the back. So there are three of them. They are Chin's batteries. They were bought from Amazon. So each battery is 100 amp hours. So I have a total of 300 amp hours of battery. So in terms of watt hours, that equivalents to about 1,280 watt hours per battery. So it's a little over 3,000 watt hours which honestly when it comes to Starlink I need that. So like right now the batteries are at 70% because yesterday um, there was a lot of cloud coverage and you know the panels weren't really getting very much sun and I had Starlink running all day because I was working all day. Now I know that I have 70% because of the Victron smart shunt that is installed in here. So I talk about the smart shunt as well in that video about the whole entire solar system setup. It is amazing. I won't show you the smart shunt because honestly it's just like a little device, but I will show you the app and I have it installed on the, on the laptop so you can see it that way. So like I said, batteries are at 70%. Okay, right now those panels are barely getting enough sun to actually 
be able to have Starlink going. So just for shits and giggles, I'll also pull up our energy. So you can see that's how much solar is being pulled in right now, 70 watts. That's about usually how much it takes to charge Starlink, which is why I'm at like negative 73 amps, negative two watts. It keeps the time remaining keeps going to zero. So because just pulling in that much, I should be able just to retain that 70%. But obviously I want to get back up to 100%. So to do that today, I'm probably going to run the generator for a little bit. So I will go show you what generator I have. So this is the Alp generator. It is kind of heavy. Running power is 850 watts and a maximum power is 1000 watts. Neither Marshall or I have seen it go to 1000 watts. So it does pump about 30 amp hours, which equivalents to about 370 watt hours. And so if I don't have Starlink running, it pushes power into those batteries, which is nice. Supposedly it's not super loud. I think it's obnoxious, but I don't like loud noises. So, you know, instead of, you know, really telling you how it works though, I'll just entertain you and show you instead, especially how I have to do it because I have no upper body strength. I can't do the pull. So I mentioned I don't have upper body strength. I have to sit on the ground and pretty much row with the machine like a damn rowing boat. <laughs> Make sure it's on start, prime it for about 10 seconds. Come on. So as you can see now, pulling in 32 amps and 436 watts. Because at negative 88 amp hours, that means it would take about almost three hours to fully charge. So I'm gonna do enough to let it get to like 80, 85% and then I'll let solar take care of the rest. It's just 71 is like really low and I don't like being that low. Okay, that's exhausting. So yeah. Um, I'm pretty ridiculous when it comes to that. I've only had to use it in Colorado. Um, in Arizona, that sun was beaming, man, so I didn't have to, it was great. All right, another product that I couldn't do this without, Zero Breeze. At first, I hated it. I went from living in a house that was always nice and cool to, you know, sometimes sweating in the camper, and I wanted an air conditioner that was going to, you know, cool me off. Well, it didn't perform the way I wanted it to, but after living in the camper for a while and really acclimating to the lifestyle and also coming west into dry climate instead of being in the east where it's always wet and humid and gross, I have come to actually really like Zero Breeze. Honestly though, I only use it for Percy. If I'm here, I can just open windows, open doors, get a cross breeze going and everything's fine. When Percy's in the camper and I have to leave, I can't open windows or do any of that. So the best I can do is create a little bit of a cross breeze with the small window and the max fan, which I'll talk about in a second, and have zero breeze going. It pulls about the same as Starlink, so between 60 to 100 watt hours. So I can't have both going off at the same time. If I did, I would my battery would be gone. So of course when I leave, I turn off Starlink and then I'll turn on Zero Breeze if I need it. With it getting cooler, I don't need it as much. It's great because it does pull the humidity out of the air. It does cool it off in here. If I put uh, blankets up on the windows to contain the coolness, um, I'll come back, I'll open the door. It'll be 85 degrees outside and it'll be in you know, good 65 in here, which isn't bad for a husky. You know, and so heat rises, and if there is any heat in here, it's going to rise to the ceiling, which will then be sucked out by the max fan. So that is the max fan right there. It's not on, 
because it's cold right now. I don't want it on. It makes life so much easier. So like I said, I can open up this little window right there, or if I'm, you know, here, I can just open up one of the bigger windows and then I can create a cross breeze going through the camper that is not only pulling out heat, but also pulling out any stagnant air. And so it really, it really helps. I like it. It was installed in the escape hatch though, so I don't have an escape hatch. If I have to escape, I will just have to wiggle my way out one of the small windows. I'd rather have the max fan in the escape hatch than have another giant hole right here and have more issues potentially for leaks and just, yeah. Which, there haven't been any issues there. It's been great. One more electronic I want to talk about before I start moving on to other things. The refrigerator. So... I have to have the refrigerator because Percy is diabetic and I have insulin in there. And all those small little like insulin holder refrigerator things, they cost a lot of money. They cost about the same much as a bigger fridge. I'm gonna get a bigger fridge and then put the insulin in there and then I'll also put some chicken sausage and my eggs and you know, any beers that I buy or you know, anything that I feel is important that needs to stay cold. It all fits in there and it's, there's plenty of room. It's great. So there's, like I said, plenty of room in there. So, you know, insulin, eggs, a lot of cheese. I like cheese. It's super convenient. So last year, whenever Marshall was with me and we were doing it full time together, we had pretty much the whole entire kitchen set up like outside, like we looked like we were trying to live in the woods. Wasn't quite thrilled with the setup. I didn't really like it. So when it time for me to go to New Mexico and Arizona by myself, I didn't bring the table. I didn't bring a lot of the bins, but I had to still bring the kitchen stuff. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna cook on the tailgate. You know, I'll still bring the Coleman. I'll still do what, I, what we did before, just everything would be on the tailgate. That didn't work well either because I hated trying to, you know, drag the Coleman and, uh, the gas line out and setting everything up and then cooking and then cleaning and then putting it all back away and I didn't like it so I rarely cooked and I learned it had to do with the fact that it was always in the bed of the truck and it was just so big and it was a pain to put together and I didn't need two burners it was just it was too much I found a solution for that though so now I have a single burner it's literally three things the actual burner the thing that you put your pot on and then the line. I can either attach the propane line from outside that's attached to the big propane tanks or I can attach one of those little Coleman um, one gallon tanks and it just it makes cooking way easier if for any reason I need to have a double burner I have this. Works great. So I also mentioned something about the table. Last year we had a six foot table that was a huge pain in the butt to drag around and set up and then it might have broke. I blame the storm. Marshall blames me jumping on it. Either way, it broke. So I spent a little bit of money before this trip and got myself a nice table that I love. This one. It's so pretty. So what I like about this table is that it's four feet long instead of six feet long, and it actually fits, you know, the side of the scamp whereas the six foot one would actually would hang off the back or you know we'd always have it coming out here or whatever it's also adjustable so there's three different holes so I can make it as tall or as short as I want it doesn't fold in the middle so whenever I fold in the legs it's just one solid piece which fits perfectly on top of the bins in the back of the truck whenever I am moving I love this table it wasn't exactly a cheap table but it's amazing I love this table so something else I cannot live without, the toilet. Going to Arizona, I considered not bringing it and just trying to, you know, be truly wild and I'm glad that I brought it because that wouldn't have worked out very well. <laughs> you know, compared to the videos last year and compared to what other people do, I don't set up a tent unless I have company for any reason. I keep the toilet in the back of the truck. If I do need to use it, I will grab it and put it in the camper, do my business, and then bring it into the back of the truck. It's just easier that way. That and if I'm out and about, if I do need to dump it for any reason, it's already there. And uh, it's a good arm workout too. So Something else that's not like a big thing, but I I need to have it. I'm gonna put you down and then I'll show you. Can you see me? Yes, you can. Okay. A hose and a water filter. This is just a cheap water filter. 
It's from Walmart. It's Walmart brand. It works great. You know, I've pulled water from all types of things using this, and every single time the water turns out amazing. I never taste anything. This hose is new. It's only five feet, so it works perfectly. Usually I just go get water from uh, either spigots out of the ground, you know, or if I'm ending up at a dump station, or there's an RV park, or where I'm showering, you know, just different places I can find water. And it's made of like a really cool material too, so it's super, super durable. Whereas the other hoses that I had, they would you know, crimp and do all the crazy stuff. This is just, it's the coolest hose I've ever had. Okay. I'm gonna go back in the camper and try to defrost. I should go ahead and say that the heater also is a necessity. Um, this style heater, you can get it from Scamp's website. If I didn't have a heater, I would chase the weather a little bit more because I do turn it on a lot in the night, especially when it gets in the you know, low 30s. I need to spend the day hydrating too. I'm going to get my first tattoo tomorrow and I'm excited but my skin needs to be prepped. I'm also going to go shower today and do laundry and probably more work. All I do is work. I am starting to defrost and feel my hands again slightly. Toes are still numb but I don't need those. Next are going to be more personal items. Um, things that I could go without. I just don't want to. They just make my life a little bit easier. So I do live minimalist out here. So all these things that I have brought, either I have a purpose or I see a reason to have it. Or um, I try not to just bring stuff just to bring it. Just whatever. The first ones. And you have heard me talk about them before. And I will talk about them again. And I will talk about them in future videos. There are two things that I will always talk about that I absolutely love. These fans are amazing. We have five of them. Three of them are in this camper right now. The other two are at home. They are USB-C and micro USB uh, rechargeable. There are multiple settings. They're durable as hell. They are amazing. They're really good too in the winter time. So the batteries, I don't like the batteries to get too cold. So if I'm using the camper for any reason, I'll use this to push the heat down and then push the heat under the bed to keep the batteries warm. So there'll be one pushing down and one pushing you know, this way. It, they work great. I love them. The other thing that I absolutely love, these rechargeable lighters. They're like little, like, lasers, like, you know, and they work just as well as, like, a normal flame. I can use it on the, uh, on the stove, on candles, on pretty much anything, and they hold their battery really well. I, I love these. Like, I haven't, I have not gone back to a regular lighter since finding these. Another thing, flashlights. It gets dark at night. I'm out in nature, I need flashlights. I have several flashlights around here that I use. There is one in particular though that I want to talk about and it is this behemoth. It's made by Nebo. My dad actually bought it for Marshall and I stole it. It is 6,000 lumens. I can see into my future with this thing. I can see deep into the woods with this thing. I don't want to because I don't want eyes staring back at me, but it is insanely, insanely bright. I could probably flag down and land a plane with this thing. It's also rechargeable. One big thing about it though is that it does get really hot at the top. So if you're using it and it gets hot, don't put it on a synthetic quilt because it will melt it. Marshall would know from experience. I'm not one to let myself be too wild. I'm, I'm not a big fan of body hair. I don't, I like, on me, I just don't like it. So I'm always pretty much shaving. You know, I use an electric razor until it's time for the next shower, and, but it's a $10 one and it runs off AAA batteries. Honestly, for being 10 bucks, it works really well. So another thing I cannot live without that I use every single day, Pocket Rocket. Every single morning, and sometimes at night, and if I'm cooking soup, I do use this. Ramen, I use this. I use it a lot. I couldn't imagine not having this. I would not want to drag out the one eye stove every single time I want to heat up something. So this is the most convenient thing ever. And it's made by MSR. MSR makes awesome stuff. This is by MSR. I have this by MSR. And then the other thing I have by MSR, my coffee screen filters. I use these all the time when I'm actually using ground coffee because I have not found anything else that contains the grounds well. At first I was trying to use this and then by the end of the coffee I would end up drinking coffee grounds and I would like 
gag and I, I didn't like it. It it would ruin my coffee experience and that's a very sacred experience. It's not cheap, it's 20 bucks for this, but it's awesome. Um, I love it. I actually have two in case I need either need two cups of coffee or if Marshall's with me, I can make two separate cups of coffee. Cause it's easier just to let it dry in here and then flick it out or save it. I save the coffee grounds a lot and then I use it as a body scrub later. And speaking of coffee, there is a coffee product that I am completely obsessed with. If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably already know what I'm about to talk about. And if you're wondering what's in here, this. It's made by um, Mushroom Superfood. I like the coffee latte blend. It's just oh, it's so good. I love it. It tastes really good. I feel good when I drink it. Like sometimes with coffee, I get like really jittery or really like all over the place. I feel good when I drink this. Honestly, I would give anything for this product to sponsor me because I generally just love this product. So I'm a relatively clean person for someone that lives outside. Uh, I make the bed every day. I clean. I do what I can to stay clean and organized and neat because I just, I don't like living in filth. To help with that, I have a shark wand back. Shark back wand. Whatever the name of it is. So it's super slim, which is amazing. And I just stick it in a cubby hole. Marshall did at he put a pigtail on it to help with like so I don't have to actually like keep it on the base that it came with. I just plug it into the plug and then wrap it around and then it just charges. And it comes with an attachment that pulls up dog hair, which works great for whenever I am cleaning, you know, all of this because Percy likes to come up here sometime. And there's dog hair everywhere, you know, husky. <laughs> and lastly, the temperature gauge. I pretty much stare at this thing like 20 times a day. I just like to know what the temperature is outside. And because of where it is, I can see where the temperature is up here as far as heat is. So, you know, if I know if it's like 50, you know, if it's 58 degrees up here, it's definitely going to be cooler down at the bottom. But I do have the outside temperature underneath kind of where the tire is um, for the scamp, just so I can kind of see what the temperature is underneath the scamp, because that's where Percy is a lot. It doesn't get the accurate temperature for what it is outside, but it gets accurate for kind of in the area. Percy is my first priority when it comes to being out here. I like to make sure that he's comfortable, because if he's comfortable, then my life is easier. <laughs> so those are 23 plus one because I added the heater in there. All those products though, I use them every day. They help me live off grid, you know, solar, all that stuff. They help keep me cool. I got all my, I'm surrounded by all my fans, you know, and then I have good coffee. And so how I live is definitely way more rugged than living in a house, but I don't have to make it so rugged that I'm uncomfortable. You know, I sleep on an eight inch memory foam mattress every night, but I mean, I do have to drag my toilet in sometimes and that's okay. If you saw something that I didn't mention and you're curious about it, just let me know in the comments and I'll respond back to you. And stay tuned for the next video where I get my first tattoo and get to experience that pain. Till next time, guys. Bye. Percy, don't touch the camera. Stop. Ah, falling over. Don't look at me. Ah. Now. You're not getting fed. Stop. Okay, how am I supposed to? <laughs> Go away. Don't look at me. People keep looking at me. Why are you slowing down so much? Don't stop, you weirdo. My toes are numb. How you know you're an adult? You are amazed by a hose. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> That's getting blown up my shirt. <laughs> That's so stupid. What was I saying? I'm so cold. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs>